in this video today, we're going to talk about the pump and filter that you use to keep your water clean. In the last video that was posted to this channel, we talked about the three things you need to keep your water clean, and that's circulation, filtration, and sanitation. So in this video, circulation and filtration pretty much go together, and we're going to go into more detail about that, and then in the following video, we'll go into more details about sanitation options. The reason that circulation is important is because you have to have the water moving. And if you know, we know this out of nature, if you find a stagnant pool of water, it's going to be kind of gross and disgusting. Who knows what's in it? There's growing, it's algae. And if you've got flowing water and moving water, it's going to be cleaner, hopefully, than the stagnant water. So movement of the water is really an important part to keep it clean. And when we add the sanitation, whatever method you use, that water has to move around in order for that sanitation method to actually sanitize or kill the microbes that are in the water. Now, you've got the water moving, but then you've got sediment, you've got hair, there's skin flakes, oils, lotions, other debris that gets in there, dust, dirt, particles, maybe bugs that fly in, who knows what, uh, other stuff, microbes. Okay, and we need to get all those microbes, all that dust, all that sediment caught into the filter. And that's why the filter is important. So uh, as far as your pump and filter goes, there are a lot of different ways to go about this. And how you go about it really depends upon what country you live in and what equipment you can get a hold of. So for most people in the US and for some people outside of the US, we've been using this pump and filter called the Marine Land. It's a submersible aquarium pump and filter. You could use pool pumps and filters. You could use pond pumps and filters, uh, circulation pumps. There's a lot of different types of pumps you could use. The pumps typically will fall into one of two categories. You can either have submersible pumps, which means they can go underwater, or they are non-submersible pumps. You could use hot tub or circulation pumps exterior to the chest freezer. Now, there's also, again, that kind of alludes to, there's two places to put the pump. You can either put it in your chest freezer, in which case it really should be submersible, uh, or you can put it outside of your chest freezer. I have experimented with all of these. I have used pond pumps, aquarium pumps, hot tub pumps, circulation pumps, pretty much all these different types of pumps you could imagine. I have used them and had varying results with them. The external pump and filter, I'm gonna really shelf that one for this conversation because that really is an advanced conversation. It's an advanced way to get the water flowing into your chest freezer. And I say it's advanced because it, you will have to plumb. You're having to do plumbing, go through the walls. And anytime you drill a hole in the wall or in the floor of the chest freezer, you are risking puncturing a chiller line. You could go through the lid. Yes, that was my original setup. I had a, a very expensive aquarium pump. It was sitting on the outside and I plumbed it through the lid. And the problem with that here in central Texas where I am is that it added a bunch of heat to the system and I was not able to get my water cold enough. And I actually tried an exterior hot tub pump uh, as well as a, a big pool filter, a canister filter. And again, I had the same problem with that. So. I've tried the, gone the external route. If you live in a place where you have a temperate climate and it doesn't get very hot, it gets colder in the evenings and there's a big variance of temperature and it's not very humid, you may, not, you may be able to get away with an external pump and filter. Some people have done that, but remember that you are risking damaging the chest freezer, possibly killing it beyond repair. You are risking the uh, heat gain into the chest freezer. And then you, the other thing is that you're gonna have condensation. Anytime there's a difference in temperature from inside and out, when that water goes through the plumbing or tubing and into the pump and filter, you're gonna end up with condensation to deal with on the outside. What's one of the advantages of a chest freezer setup over a chiller based system is that there's no condensation or water on the outside. Everything is kept inside. So with the internal pumps, what I'm typically recommending, what most people use for a chest freezer that's smaller than 15 cubic feet, you typically want to have a uh, aquarium or pond pump that is submersible that goes in there. The Marine Land pump and filter is an all-in-one unit, and you can just put that little thing in there, drape the cord over the side, or run it through a hole in the lid, and then you just turn that thing on and you change the filter as needed. There's a lot more details you can find in the articles section of my website. Uh, how to you know change the filter there are there's I think there's a video on my YouTube channel that I've already done on how to do that so I'm not going to go into details there there are also ways to take a pond pump and uh, circulate the water they have a better gallon flow rate uh, typically the flow rate needs to be minimally two to four times the amount of water so if you have 100 liters it should be 300 to 400 liters if it's 60 gallons it should be uh, 180 to 240 gallons per hour flow rate. So the flow rate needs to be three to four times the amount of water that you have in your chest freezer, minimally. Now, that's the pump rating. 
But by the time you add a filter to that, it's gonna make a big difference. So the filter will slow down the flow rate as well as any plumbing or 90 degree elbows. There's a lot of variables that go into that. So you wanna make sure that you've got a pump that's sturdy enough or has enough power to actually handle the filtration and still keep all of the water circulating. You don't wanna end up with dead areas in the chest freezer where the water isn't uh, circulating, where the sanitation won't reach, because then you can end up with microbes. So uh, not a good thing. So um, as far as the filters go, there are essentially three different types of filters that you can find that uh, come with aquarium, uh, well, I guess really four different types of filters that come with aquariums or pump or pond filters or uh, external sediment filters. Number one, you have these big spongy foam things. They're either black or sometimes blue, and they're very big. They, they might catch hair or some very large degree, but they're not going to filter out the microbes, and they don't really work very well for finer sediment like dust or sand. Another type of filter, it's called a, uh, typically with these uh, aquarium filters, they could be biological filters. Those also do not work well for our purpose. The biofilters are meant to be used in an aquarium where you have live animals that are eating and pooping. And hopefully you're not pooping in your chest freezer, okay? So you don't need those biofilters. They don't help. Activated carbon, mm, it's okay, but it's not really necessary to use that. What we're looking for is a filter to catch the debris. They call those polishing filters. And that marine land pump that I talked about is one of the few, actually the only, aquarium pump that I found that actually has an option with a polishing filter. The only downside of the Marine Land is that that polishing filter, that replacements, only can be uh, bought from Marine Land and sometimes Amazon and other stores are out of it. So there are some supply chain issues, which is one of the reasons I prefer and actually switch to, I used it for three years, but I switched to a pond pump, a submersible pond pump and just a regular canister filter uh, that is used for like under a kitchen sink to filter out sediment uh, from the drinking water. Now with those type of filters, there's two different types. You can get either a woven filter, which is like a solid piece of material where it looks solid and it goes in there. And then the other type is a pleated filter. I got rid of all of my woven filters because I don't really like the way they work. Uh, they're, they're too, the, anything under 20 microns is going to impede your water flow. Anything much larger than that and you're not gonna be catching the microbes that you wanna catch. So those woven filters really do impede the water flow quite a bit and they can't be cleaned. So the pleated filter, looks like this. So you see you've got all these little pleats that are in here, okay? And these things can be cleaned and reused, which is great. So um, that's what I prefer for the filtration system. So the pump and filter work in combination. I have plans on my website that you can look at uh, or that you can buy. They're, uh, they're suggested $15, but you can donate any amount that you want, more than that or less than that, $5. Uh, it's the lowest amount you could donate and any amount that you put towards that cause will help me support our global community uh, of cold plunging people as well as my family and your patronage is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions about pumps or filters, uh, please put those in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. Also in the description section of the video, you'll find more information about my Facebook group, uh, my website, and where to get my book. Uh, buy my book. It's got a lot of great info in there. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know, comments, and uh, I think that's it. So happy cold plunging.